What screams I make terrible financial decisions. In college, I was always behind on my rent because I would spend all of my money on wheat and Italian cheese bread from Little Caesars. I would get super baked, get the munchies, and order an Italian cheese bread. This was a daily thing for years and I eventually got evicted. I must have spent close to $50,000 on wheat and Italian cheese bread by my sophomore year. Anyways, that's not my answer. My sister owns a coach purse. Treating the limit on their credit card as money they have. X. They have a $5,000 limit on a new card and immediately think what they could buy with $5,000. Setting up a GoFundMe account to get their Facebook friends to pay for their wedding, instead of opting for a simpler wedding, or having a longer engagement, or eloping now and having the big party later. While still going out to dinner every other night, and taking expensive trips. A post to our slash personal finance asking what to do when your friends think your novelty checks are real and cash them. When you ask them how much they paid for something and they only know how much it costs them on monthly payments. Eating out for lunch every single day and complaining about how poor slash broke you are. No sh asterisk t Sandra, was that peanut and chicken kale salad with a side of pasta and extra bakery treat really worth it? When they buy a large, fancy boat but can't afford the marina fees and upkeep expenses to maintain it. I used to work at GameStop, I had a customer that bought a PlayStation because a particular exclusive game came out for it, then would trade the system and game in to buy an Xbox when a new exclusive for it came out about a month later, and would go back and forth trading the respective consoles and games in every few months. I tried TP convince him to just own each system and buy the games for each when they release because he was losing so much money doing what he was doing. His response was that he couldn't afford to buy both at the same time. I didn't have the brightest customers. In Western Australia it looks like this, get laid off by mining company that was initially paying you well, specifically because it isn't a secure position, but never mind that, already taken out a $600k and loan on a house, a $80,000 loan on a sick V8 Commodore, plus another $10,000 putting in performance cams and a straight through exhaust so you can pull mad skids, this is all on the justification that I'll be able to smash these loans out in a couple years on this salary I. Fuck. What do now? What's that? Tickets to Bali are $300 return? Better take the family for a booze fueled cheap shit buying bonanza. It's fine, we'll just remortgage the house. Dead fucking easy. Rent a center. Heard a co-worker talking about their new bong and she showed me a picture of it on a table with burn marks. I asked why it was so burnt and she said uh rent a center's on my ass cause I haven't paid yet, but I don't want to, I shouldn't have to pay for a burnt table I replied, why would they even rent it to you like that? She says, well they're assholes. I told them I burnt it and they won't even give me a discount or anything they want more, slash 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 This bitch's new bong cost more than a table I now own off Craigslist. And she's $200 in debt for a table she can't even keep. I still think about that interaction maybe twice a week. Edit, clarified that I didn't buy the table off of her. I used to know a guy who was renowned for making bad decisions in general. To be fair, he was funny and had a heart of gold, he just wasn't a logical thinker. He never had any savings, he was always buying his girlfriend of the month pretty slash expensive things, and always mooching off his mum. One of the more flawed decisions that has always stuck with me was when his car broke down. It was a piece of junk so it was bound to happen, no biggie. He was feeling pretty blue because of it, as well as a collection of other things that had happened around the same time, largely through his own choices. So he decided that in order to finally become a winner he needed to look and feel like a winner. And do you know what makes you look and feel like a winner? Owning a brand new Chrysler. He was so excited about it, he could feel good things coming his way already. He'd picked the one he wanted, 
$70,000 AUD, he'd spoken to the dealer and organized when he was going to come in and do the paperwork. Everything was looking great for him. Then when he went to the dealership to sort it all out it turned out that he hadn't been in his current job for long enough so the loan slash finance, which he elected to do through the dealership, couldn't be approved. He came back looking pretty defeated but, in my opinion, being declined that loan was one of the luckiest things to ever happen to him. This man should not be in charge of his own money. Brand new car. No savings. Putting things on credit because they don't have money for it. Complaining on Facebook that you can't afford the $200 it will take to cover your kids school supplies this year, but also posting a daily pic of your Starbucks drink. In my part of the world, it's the newly hired on the oil rigs, when the market is booming. Go out buy a truck with a $1,000 monthly payment then buy house with a $3,000 monthly payment. Then when the market drops, they lose it all, and their credit ends up ruined so it's harder to find a decent car slash place to live. Buying things you don't really need, just because it's on sale. Edit, to clarify, I am talking about non-necessity items. Food, hygiene products, etc. are a good idea to buy when it's on sale even if you don't need it at the moment. An old friend of mine, we'll call him friend A, was in a rough place. He had a job but couldn't really afford to get out of the slump he was in, living paycheck to paycheck, so my other friend, friend B, who owned a house offered to let him stay for free for a few months, all friend A had to do was pay the internet bill, $70 mo. Easy enough, right? Well friend A decided that since he no longer had expenses, he would just quit his job and play friend B's Xbox all day long and join a band. Lo and behold, friend A ran out of money eventually. Now he owed friend B the internet bill and simply couldn't pay it. Instead of getting a job and paying it, friend A stole friend B's Xbox and pawned it, then used the money to pay friend B the internet bill. How he ever thought it would work, who knows. But that's the definition of terrible financial decisions. We don't talk to friend A anymore. Edit, well this blew up figured I was late to the party but I suppose not. An addition to the story is that about a year later, friend A sent me a text begging me to help out his family because it was summer in Texas and their AC went out. I had known the whole family most of my life, so I loaned him my spare window AC unit, I knew what would happen, but I wasn't using it and they needed it. Never saw it again, and that was the last contact I ever had with him questioning you on savings. When you let a friend know how much you have saved and they ask why you aren't spending more. Because if I spent it I wouldn't have any saved, that's how saving fucking works. Edit and dash on. When someone rents an apartment in a shit part of town but drives a very expensive car with a stereo setup that you can hear, nay, feel from half a mile away. When you are part of MLM company and you own your own business. Bonus points for using guilt. Edit, MLM is multi-level marketing company. This might get ranty because I just need to vent it out. One of my colleagues is probably the nicest man on the planet. He's kind, considerate and loyal, you couldn't write a movie script for a better person. No Rhodes Scholar, but very hard working and liked by everyone. Almost every person in his life takes horrendous advantage of him. I can tell that he deeply fears being rejected by his loved ones and craves their approval and acceptance, but it has crossed a line. They have a joint income of over $150,000, and yet are circling the drain in debt and can barely pay any bills. They live in credit. His wife is usually a decent person, but when she says jump, he asks how high. This has resulted in numerous luxury shopping trips her mother moving in and being a complete leech on their lives, vacations and they just had to buy two brand new vehicles last year with all the bells and whistles. They can barely pay the mortgage and the house is a mid-sized fixer-upper. At least every week or two he comes in and I force out of him the latest thing they spent way too much money on, almost everything is on pay installments, even their utility bills. 
he pays for five cell phones. He usually can't drive his truck because there is no gas in it. In the summer we have barbecues every week for about three to five dollars, hot dogs are cheaper than burgers, and there are times he doesn't have the three dollars. A 45-year-old man with a six-figure income doesn't have three dollars two days after payday. Thankfully his kids are clueless that there is a problem, as it should be, they are kids and don't need adult problems, they get whatever they need for school. My concern is that one day the bubble will burst. Repo companies will come in, creditors are calling, they are precariously close to the edge at all times. All I can do is encourage him to get therapy and learn to say no. But I can't force it. Edit, lots of good advice from people coming in, good to hear from people on the other side of the fence, it's giving me a new perspective. His youngest two kids are preteens, not sure I want to tell them about the magnitude of the problem, just let them enjoy a few years of being kids. Edit, FFS. Was chatting with him at the end of the workday. Apparently they are using the tax refund they assume they are getting and, the whole family is going to Mexico for spring break. F I told him to sell his truck or find a cardboard box to live in.